What is up guys, Jarv here, back today jumping into Destiny. We are back with another This Week in Destiny, giving you the full breakdown for the up and coming week. This week sees the launch of Into the Light. We also have a brand new Final Shape developer gameplay preview. On top of that, we have a full breakdown of all the weekly rituals, the brand new rewards and so much more. So be sure to stick around and enjoy the video. If you do enjoy the video, be sure to leave a comment and rating down below. And remember to subscribe for more Destiny 2 content. We are well on our way to 200k, so make sure to hit that red button and ring that bell to make sure you don't miss an update. But without further delay, guys, let's jump into the video. Now another week and another this week in Destiny. This week marks week 20 of Season of the Wish. And with that, we see the launch of Into the Light. This is the major update to bridge the end of the season until the launch of the final shape. And with that in mind, we do have a brand new developer gameplay preview that will be going live on Tuesday, April 9th at 9.30 a.m. Pacific time. This is 30 minutes before the weekly reset and Bungie will be sharing all new details and gameplay from the final shape. And this will be broadcasted on Twitch, YouTube and TikTok. Now this developer gameplay preview will also have a brand new Twitch drop available. You'll only need to watch the stream for 15 minutes to earn it and you'll get your hands on this incredible tiger emblem. On top of that, if you were still earning the Those Held Deer and Echo Diamond emblem from the Into the Light preview reveals, then you'll also be able to continue to earn progress towards those. And we'll be streaming the Final Shape gameplay preview right here on YouTube, so be sure to stay stuck to the channel and we'll keep you up to date. Now, as well as the massive update for the final shape, this week sees the launch of Into the Light. With that, we have a brand new activity in the form of Onslaught, which will be our main path to earning the brave arsenal that are being reintroduced as part of this update. There'll also be Destiny 2 Year 1 inspired armor to earn, a brand new social space that you'll be able to access via the tower, as well as the ability to customize your guardian, as well as the reprisal and reintroduction of two iconic exotic missions. Weapons for both of these have been updated, will now be craftable, with one of these missions going live upon the launch of Into the Light, with the second becoming available in May. This will be alongside the brand new Crucible map pack, on top of a raid boss challenge mode called Pantheon. There is a lot to get our teeth into with this Into the Light update. What are you most excited for? Be sure to sound off down in the comments below. Now next up we're going to move on to the exotic mission Rotator. And for the up and coming week we have two exotic missions that will be available. These come in the form of Presage alongside the return of the Whisper of the Worm mission that will take place over on Io. Now to gain access to Whisper of the Worm, you will need to speak to Eris Morn. But as this mission is part of Into the Light, this will be free and available to all players. Naturally, the Whisper of the Worm exotic sniper rifle will be available, which has been updated and is now craftable. So whether you're jumping into Whisper for the first time, or if you're looking to jump back in to pick up the new version and the all-important catalysts, then as well as updated weapons, there's also new secrets to find. Now, alongside the Whisper of the Worm, we do see the return of Presage. Now, to gain access to this mission, you will need to either own Beyond Light or Season of the Chosen. This is the home to the Dead Man's Tail, which is the exotic scout rifle, which is craftable and had new perks added as part of the exotic mission Rotator. Now, alongside that exotic, you can also pick up weapons and armor from Season of the Haunted. This includes Nazarek's Whisper, Bump in the Night, Tears of Contrition, Hollow Denial, Fire Fright, and Without Remorse. And that's alongside Ostringer, Drang, the Loved, the Callus Mini Tool, and if you're looking for armor, you can pick up the Eidolon Pursuant armor set. Now, it's not currently known what legendary weapons or armor will be available as part of the Whisper mission. So with that being said, what weapons and armor would you like to see as part of these missions? Be sure to sound off down in the comments below. Now, from here, we're going to move on to the featured challenge for the Crota's End Raid. This takes place over the bridge encounter and it's called Precarious Balance. Now, to get this challenge done, Guardians cannot step on the bridge whilst it's fully built. So you will need to jump across the remaining section prior to completing this encounter. So you'll definitely want to make sure that you have enough enlightened players and that each member of your fire team crosses the bridge appropriately in order to get this challenge done. But if you and your team can do it, then you'll gain access to an additional raid chest and that all-important bonus raid loot. Now, speaking of raids, this moves us on to the featured raid and dungeon content for the week. 
This week's featured raid is the King's Fall Raid, which is the second reprised raid in Destiny 2. And as the featured raid, all the challenges will be available, which makes it ideal if you're looking to earn the weapon patterns for some incredible raid weapons. And on top of that, if you don't have the Touch of Malice, which is the exclusive weapon available only in the King's Fall Raid, then you can even farm Oryx, the final boss this week, in order to get your hands on it. Now, as for the featured dungeon, the Grasp of Avarice Returns, this launched as part of the 30th anniversary pack. Now, the Grasp dungeon is one of the best sources to farm artifice armor. And on top of that, you can even farm the final boss for some absolutely incredible weapons. This is also the home to the Galahorn rocket launcher and is a weapon well worth having, not just for Into the Light, but also the final shape once it launches in June. Now from here we're going to move on to Dares of Eternity and the 30th Anniversary Pack Activity. Alongside the Scatterhorn armor set we see the return of the Lightkin armor set from Season of the Splicer. And as always with Splicer armor we do have the amazing Splicer weapons available too. That includes Chroma Rush, Ignition Code, Grid Skipper, Farewell, Sojourner's Tail, Shattered Scyther, alongside the main ingredients Long Shadow, Last Dance, Toil and Trouble, Wishbringer and the Last Perdition. Now none of those weapons are in fact craftable so if you are looking for a god roll then you'll need to grind for it and all these items can drop during the course of the activity upon completion or by handing in strange coins over at the Star Horse over in the Treasure Hoard. Now from here we're going to move on to the weekly rituals and we have a returning Nightfall and Grandmaster Nightfall for week 20. This comes in the form of Birthplace of the Vial which was one of two strikes that was introduced with the Witch Queen. And the birthplace is one of the easier strikes in this season's rotation. So if you are still looking to earn your Conqueror Seal, then this week would be a great week to jump in and do it. And when it comes to Nightfall exclusive weapons, then this week we'll likely see the return of the Braytek Osprey as a Nightfall exclusive reward. Now it's important to remember we do have more Nightfall exclusive rewards than we do have Nightfalls in the rotation. But if the Braytek Osprey isn't something that you have and you're still seeking out the God Roll, then this week be the week to get it done. Now moving on to the featured Crucible Rotators, this week introduces Rift alongside Showdown and upon the conclusion of Iron Banner this weekend we'll also see the return of Trials of Osiris giving you another great opportunity to earn some of the new Trials weapons. Now when it comes to bonus rank rewards these can be found over in the Gambit playlist this week so if you're still holding on to your seasonal challenges for this playlist or you're looking to earn or guild your Dredge and Seal then this week is most definitely the week to get all those done. Now from here we're going to move on to the Lost Sector calendar for week 20. This week kicks off over in the Bay of Drowned Wishes and we'll be offering exotic helmets. On Wednesday you can head to the Chamber of Starlight for a chance at exotic boots. Perdition will be available on Thursday offering exotic gauntlets. With the Bunker E15 being available on Friday alongside the return of Trials, this time offering exotic chess pieces. Concealed Void is available on Saturday offering exotic helmets. The Thriller Drone being available on Sunday, offering exotic boots. And then we can round out the week over in the Guided Precept, and this will be offering exotic gauntlets. So if you're still filling out your exotic collections, then be sure to plan your week accordingly. And if they're already full, then these can also drop world to drop weapons. And if you want to check out this calendar in full for yourself, then make sure to do so over in Today in Destiny. And I'll leave the link to that down in the video description below. So there we have it guys, a good look on everything that you can expect for week one of Into the Light. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to check out one of the two videos you see here in these cards for more Destiny 2 content. And if you want to keep up to date with everything to do with Destiny 2, then be sure to hit subscribe as well. I'm going to play the game as always guys, and I will catch you all again very soon.